Ever since its discovery in 1905, there has only ever been one species of Tyrannosaurus, that being Tyrannosaurus rex. And over the last century, there have been a couple proposed additional species of Tyrannosaurus, including Tyrannosaurus imperator and Tyrannosaurus zucangensis. But all of those have been re-described as Tyrannosaurus rex, so there is still only one species of Tyrannosaurus until now. Welcome back to Paleopedia, and when it comes to classification of animals and their scientific names, it can sometimes be a little confusing. As an example, which is related to this video, in previous videos I have talked about the family of theropods known as the Tyrannosaurs. This is a group of theropod dinosaurs that are generalized by being very large, apex predators of their environment, and they all lived between 82 and 65 million years ago when the dinosaurs went extinct. Within this family, known as Tyrannosauridae, there are two subfamilies, Albertosaurinae and Tyrannosaurinae. Albertosaurinae consists of the two Tyrannosaurus, Albertosaurus and Gorgosaurus, whereas Tyrannosaurinae include other specimens like T. rex, Tarbosaurus, and Despletosaurus. And then, within that subfamily of Tyrannosaurinae, there is a clade known as Tyrannosaurinae, which include three genuses of Tyrannosaurus, Zucan Tyrannus, Tarbosaurus, and T. rex. And T. rex is a species within the genus Tyrannosaurus, which is where we finally get to the point of this video. Based on evidence surrounding a partial skull fossil discovered in New Mexico in 1983, they've determined that it's different enough from T. rex to be its own new species, that being Tyrannosaurus macriensis. Now at first glance, this skull fossil, which is pretty fragmentary, doesn't look all that different from your standard T. rex fossil. In fact, it looks so similar to the average T. rex that when it was first discovered back in 1983, scientists basically said it is a T. rex and put it on the shelf. Regarding that, a lot of paleontologists looking at this new study have basically said what they usually say, that there isn't enough differences in this fossil to justify it being its own species. The biggest piece of evidence that this fossil has going for it is the age that it is from. Pretty much all T. rex fossils come from a small window of paleontological time, that being between 66 and about 68 million years ago. This T. macriensis fossil was found in sediment dating back to about 72 million years ago. That is a 6 to 7 million year difference between all known T. rex fossils and this one. Add that to the structural differences of the fossil itself, including a less pronounced brow and a couple other features, the evidence is there for this fossil to represent a whole new species of Tyrannosaurus. In terms of its size, T. macriensis is estimated to be around the same size as T. rex, just like I said, some features weren't as pronounced, which would line up with an earlier species later evolving into T. rex. The problem with this assessment is that they didn't actually date the fossil, they dated the sediment that the fossil was in, which could lead to a misrepresentation of how old the fossil is. The biggest counter evidence for this fossil being a new species of Tyrannosaurus is the fact that T. rex specimens have quite a bit of morphological differences from fossil to fossil. Paleontologist Thomas Carr, who is known for studying variations in T. rex specimens, has called this study unpersuasive, basically saying that there aren't enough differences in this new proposed macriensis specimen with known T. rex specimens to justify it being its own species. It just goes to show how paleontology can be really tricky to figure out sometimes, but in my opinion, I think the evidence is there for this macriensis proposal to be an actual new species of Tyrannosaurus. But until more fossils that correlate the proposed T. macriensis species is found, the debate of whether T. rex is alone in its genus continues. 